Okay, this is part one of what could be um, quite a long series. I've been commissioned to make an outside lantern for a barn conversion. Um, the guy who's commissioned it, he's converted the place himself, he's, he's a woodsman and he's cut all his own wood and he's done a lovely job. Anyway, he wants this big lantern that he's seen uh, somewhere else uh, reproducing or making similar. Um, so I've had it on the go, or I've had the, the commission for quite some time, and what with the hand and all sorts of other things on the go, um, never really got around to it. So I've actually finally started it. Um, so, th and so this is part one. I'm not sure how many parts it's going to be. It's taking quite a long while so far. I think I've uh, this first episode will be condensed from ten hours' work. So. Who knows, don't know how long it will be, but uh, let's get cracking, hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you on part two. So, let's see what we've got. been given these plans, and this is the general idea, and that's actually sort of to scale, so it's pretty big. It's got... Uh, hook on the top with a little sort of donut thing then a um, cone and then a square and then a sweep and then this is the bracket to hang it off the post all the dimensions on there all the little details so we've also got some proper scale drawings of all the little bits and pieces. He's um, spent a bit of time on it, getting it all prepared. This is actually a proper scale drawing as well. So I shouldn't have too much trouble in getting it sort of right, somewhere near. It saves me so much um, aggravation if uh, people supply plans. So very rarely happens. So we're going to cut up the angle iron, which is what I'm using for the frame. It's a uh, 13 by 13 by 3 angle iron, millimetres that is obviously, it's about half inch by half inch by eighth. I'm just going to measure up what I need. I'll put that bit of inch 3 8 in the back because um, it just stops any chance of it tipping up when you're cutting with the the uh, leg upwards towards or away from me sort of thing so if the blade catches it can't flip it backwards um, which can be a danger when you're doing this sort of thing and you end up breaking the blades so I think that's not quite there I can't remember what this one is now it's uh, I think it's 11 inches, something like that. Across the, that's the bottom actually, the base. It's sort of bell shaped, so the, the widest bit is at the bottom. So we'll cut the rest of these off. Now I've got it set up. Again, just put that bit of flat back in there just holds it that much tighter. I turn it all over, up to the stop, get rid of that bit, that doesn't need to be there, tighten her up, and cut the other mitre. So that's all you need to do when you're cutting that um, for a square. I, I guess most of you know that but may, there might be some people who don't. You just literally flip the the uh, angle over. You don't need to keep swapping your saw from one left mitre to right mitre. You just turn it over. And you whip the end off and you're back to the same mitre again. Turn it over. Bob's your uncle. So right, I've got it all cleaned up, set up and that's a square across the bottom there. Just putting a very small tack on each corner. Um, 
held down nicely by my freshly made welders hold downs, third hands, which I don't know how I've done without, they're marvellous. They just really hold things nice and, and square, because if you sort of push down on this angle it sort of can, can rock a bit if you're not careful, so I'm quite impressed with these hold downs so far. Again, just another tack on the corner, just a very tiny tack. <laughs> Arced itself to the bench. <laughs> Obviously wasn't 100% earthed and it's just arced up. Stick the last one in. Square I'm using is just um, it's actually a builder's square I think for doing um, roofing. Uh, it's got all sorts of measurements on, which you can do compound mitres and oh, so complicated. It came with a great big thick booklet on how to use it. And I looked at the first couple of pages and it was as far as I got. And I literally just use it for this sort of job. Very tiny tack. The trouble is, if you put too big a tack on it, it goes all over the place, even though you're holding it square, which I'm finding at the moment there it's a bit tight. I don't think these hold downs will hold it exactly where I want it this time. I'm going to have to give it a little bit of assistance with my hand. moved a little bit. So just help out. Little tack. And that has got it nicely tacked up. So all I've got to do is weld up these. I don't know if you can see I've, I've actually mitered, not mitered, beveled the, um, the joints just on the top and on the outside edge there. I'll weld all them up clean them up. I'm not going to bother welding on the inside at all. So now we've just got to do exactly the same with the small one. Right, I didn't bore you with all the details. Welded them up. Just got to clean them up now. And I'm just using a flat disc. Um, I think it's about 40 grit, something like that. I find the 40s is about a very useful grade. Um, it tears the, the world off fairly quickly but still gives a reasonably nice finish. A bit of a close up. Whip that weld off. You want to keep your disc quite flat otherwise you tend to get ridges in it. If you keep it flat, it blends in much nicer. Do another one. You can see there it's blended in quite nicely. You hardly know there was a weld there. Now what I'm going to do as well is take these little bits out the corner because that looks a bit unsightly. I want it to look neat even though this probably won't be seen on either of them, top or bottom actually. I just want to take it out anyway, just using a fairly decent pile. Not that I've got many but this is one that is fairly decent. I don't even know where this one came from. Now this angle iron is is black angle iron, so it's actually got quite rounded edges. I did originally want to use um, bright angle, but I couldn't get any in 13mm. So 
I decided to go with the black and actually as it turns out it's probably just as well because I probably will take the edges off everything when I'm finished just to give a bit of a softer finish there you go that's just taking that little bit out do it on all the other four corners or three remaining corners doesn't take a lot because it's it's just a, a remnant of the world it's not sort of like the full world right so I've got them cleaned up done all corners on both pieces so it's come up reasonably nice but what I went over with afterwards was these I don't know what they are they're 3M but I haven't got a clue what you call them they're a quarter of an inch thick, quite flexible, but I use a backing disc uh, plate behind them. Um, and I bought them by mistake, but they do quite a nice finish on sort of black iron. And I don't know if you can see there, I've also put a little chamfer on the corner on both pieces for the uprights to attach to. Now these have got to lean in at an angle. Now I suppose I could have tried to figure out what the angle is going to be and put a compound mitre on there but my saw doesn't do compound mitres so I'm just going to guess it. It's not um, coming in enough to really warrant it. But I can't figure out how to do it so I'm just going to think about it and come back when I've thought about it or when I've figured it out. Right, figured it out. I sat down and worked out that it's 37 mil difference on each from each side. So I've welded this bit of round to the bench upright, nice little as upright as I can get it. And if I put the frame 37 mil away from that uh, pole, then this should be at the right angle. That is the theory. <laughs> Let's give it a go. See what happens. Right, hold it up there tight at the top and then make sure it's level with both sides. Obviously it's going to be leaning in so it's going to be diff difficult to get exactly accurate. And I'm going to put three little tacks on, one on each corner and one on the, the back so that it can't really go anywhere. So, I'll try the next one. Looks pretty good so far. Right, 37 that way. See properly, 37 that way. Just about right. Stick some hold downs on it and use these magnets as well. I want to make sure this doesn't move anywhere. So I'm belt and bracing this one. Stick that one on the corner. Get that one nice and level as well. Three tacks. I suppose I could have put a tack on each corner then made sure it was upright and then put one on the back but hey ho so let's do the others and see how we get on looks pretty good right I have made the balls up it isn't quite right it's about 6 mil out but I figured out why I didn't allow for the thickness of the material which is 3 mil so if I'd made it 40 mil instead of 37 it would have been spot on. But never mind, we'll overcome. I'll just bend it in a little bit and tack them on. Right, I've saved you the boring bits. I've tacked it all up, welded it all up, ground it up. Again with the flat disc and then with that 3M thing. And it's come up quite nicely. I'm pleased with that. 
by the time that's had a powder coating or whatever on that, that'll look quite nice. So, next job, I'm not quite sure. I think probably the top, the uh, cowl. So let's get set up for that. Right, I've marked out a line, or marked a line on this sheet. It's a bit of 16 gauge, which is 1.6 mil. It's a little bit heavy, really, for what I want to do, but it's all I had to hand. And when you buy small amounts of sheet, it's so much more expensive than if you buy a whole sheet. And as I had this kicking about, I thought I'll give it a go with this. This is this little guillotine. I bought this for, I think, 10 quid about 20 years ago or so. It had been in a fire. And it was all damaged and messed up. I cleaned it all up, redid the blades and it works a treat. So there's my sheet, I don't know if you can see where I've roughly traced out the uh, shape I want. So I'm going to cut this up into sections. Hopefully I'll have enough. There we go, four sections. I'm going to weld them all together and then trace the um, shape on after I've welded it. Cut it out. Not quite sure what with. Let's weld them up. All right, got them clamped up in the vise. A couple of uh, clamps on as well to make sure the corners are held nice and tight. Maybe nozzle. All right, just put a couple of tacks. Doesn't need a lot just to hold it all in place. Whip the clamps off. Turn it over and do the same the other side. The sheet is just fractionally bigger than I need, so it doesn't matter about the weld. Although get away with it anyway even if it was spot on size right that's them all tacked up there you go so now all I've got to do is get the template on there mark around it exactly where I want it to go, turn it over and do the other side so that they're both the same. I haven't uh, got a pattern with two I was just trying to think of what I was saying there. I, I was going to try and do it with dividers, but I couldn't. My small ones were too small. Um, my great big trammel I couldn't find. So I ended up uh, tracing it off the, the pattern because that's what I was going to do. I remember now. Um, so anyway, it's marked on there. I'm going to quickly try and whip it out with my cutting disc because I haven't got a bandsaw, which would have been dead handy. I must try and invest in one one of these days. Um, it might make life a lot easier. Not quite sure what's going to be the easiest way of doing this, cutting out segments like this or try and go from above. I've seen a couple of these portable band saws. Um, there's one or two on eBay at the moment. Oh, I might have a look at that, one of those and see if I can make myself a stand up for it because I'm sure it would be dead handy in the workshop. The trouble is I've got oh, I want so much stuff and I've got so little room so it's um, it's always a bit tricky 
And this is going to take me forever trying to do it like this. I think I'm going to try and do it uh, from above because this is just. Yeah, let's try it this way. If I can trace the line, it should work alright. And with it being in sections, as I trace one, it should just drop off as I get through it. Yeah, there you go, there's the first one off. Yeah, don't know why I didn't do it that way in the first place. Complete knob end. Another such a good invention, the cutting disc. You know, I had people um, saying, oh, doing things with cutting discs is very dangerous. Well, that's what they're for. It, is, it might be dangerous, but, you know, that's what they're designed for, cutting. Right, so now I'm going to grind them up. Let's try and start it on the big one. That's another dead handy tool. Six inch. I think it's got something like a three horsepower motor on it. It's real powerful. You're not going to stop it in a hurry. No, it can't be three horse. Well, I suppose it could be. I don't know. It's pretty powerful anyway. Just going to get another glove on. That's getting a bit warm. Just going to take the worst of it off as much as I can with this. I'll finish it off with the flat disc. I suppose I could have plasma cut these, but again, you need a sort of template to get it accurate. So there's so many ways you can do this. Um, you know, if you've got a nibbler, you could have, could nibble them out. Um, but I'm just using what tools I've got. I could treat myself to a new flat disc. They're cheap enough. I had actually someone in my last video. I think it was the last video or one of my videos saying how expensive they were, well actually I find they're really cheap really cheap I hardly use a proper grinding disc these days I've got a box full in the cupboard but I tend to use these instead they tear the stuff off quite well and they leave a nice finish and if you want to you can get really quite fine grades so you can use them for finishing if you're doing a lot of sheet metal work and you want to get a good finish on your welds I say I tend to go for the, the 40 grits because it tears the stuff off quickly it still leaves half a decent finish good enough for my jobs usually if I want to go any finer I've got uh, some little fine discs that I put on the air grinder. This little rollock, I think they're called, to sort of twist on and twist off things. And I don't generally do much fine work. I'm just trying to follow the line that, that uh, I put on there. That's why I keep sort of bending down, and having a look. I'm trying to get it pretty spot on because when you roll these up and sort of try and put them together it's actually going to look or it, it needs to, to fit tightly um, you don't need any flats or any odd, odd spots if you do they it shows put it that way right that'll focus yep, just about and that's pretty good I'm pleased with that that's 
just about spot onto the line. So just got to do exactly the same this side. I won't bore you with that. I'll get on and do it and come back when I'm done. Right. So we've got them all done. Broken attacks off. Got four identical sheets. And the, uh, the radiuses came up pretty good because if you swap them around, they're almost identical. And that's what you're looking for. That's why it's best to just use one side of your template and turn it around so it gives you a decent shape. Now we've got to bend them. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to bend them because they, they've got to go corner to corner. Um, ideally, I'd need a, a very small set of rolls, like a model maker set, but I haven't got any. I haven't even got a big set of rolls. So I'm going to try and do it under the fly press. I've just got a bit of angle iron under there and a big block of solid bar. And I'm just going to try and gently, gently put a little bit of a radius in by just moving it a tiny bit at a time and putting a little tiny crease in. The trouble with doing this is that you can so easily put um, lines in and that won't go through there. I've just noticed that it's too big so I'm going to have to do it sideways. You can see it's starting. It won't go through the hole so I'm just going to quickly take this out turn it around the other way. That's the trouble with this unusual fly press that's got sort of like it hasn't really got an open throat. It's not open throated so it's uh, somewhat restrictive but I guess it's pretty powerful with having no throat. There's no giving it whatsoever. Alright, carry on the other way. Actually you could probably see better this way. Should have done that in the first place. Just need a tiny, tiny little push each time. If you go too mad, you'll end up folding it up or, like I say, putting a line in it, which is particularly undesirable. And see that it hasn't really done the bottom half. It's a bit too full there in the middle. I'm just going to take it out a little bit. Again, just a tiny little. That's a bit better. So, what I need to do is try and do them all exactly the same, which is going to be tricky. So I don't really know. There must be a formula for working out how much you need to bend it for a, any given radius on the end. Um, when I was making fire hoods like this, just they were just three sided. Um, it wasn't quite so difficult because you do the two outs, um, two sides. There you go. And then you just lay the front up against it and draw around it and then cut it out to, to suit. So it wasn't quite so difficult, but doing a four-sided thing where all four sides have to sweep, it's a little bit more tricky. Right, so we've got them sort of bent up, but as you can see they're way out. They've got to touch all the way down at the corners. So I'm going to play about with this. This is going to take hours, so I won't bore you with it. And miraculously, here we go. Tacked up, it's taken a hell of a long while to get this this far. I say four sides is really, really tricky. I've been doing lots of bending with my mallet. This is a mallet I use for my shoeing. Um, anyway, it hasn't come up too bad, it's not 
but I think once I've got it welded up I might be able to tickle it around a little bit more just to get it completely straight. So there you go, I've cut out a lot of work, I've welded it fully, I've ground it, um, I haven't gone over it with the 3M disc yet, I haven't figured out how I'm going to fix it in yet either. Um, but anyway, it's made. So there you go, that's the, the, the hood. Next job I'm going to fill in this top. That's where the, uh, and make the decoration. Uh, the top is where the the lamp holder is going to be bolted to. I've got a ceramic um, old fashioned style bulb holder to go in there. That hasn't arrived yet. That should come in the next day or so. So I'm just going to try and accurately as I can uh, trim out this piece at the top here. Now it's gone offline, so I'm just trying to bend it round a little bit to get the line right. Got it. Um, this is a seven by seven because the top is eight inches across. It's um, so the plate needs to be seven by seven to just slip inside that half inch angle line. I don't want to do too much grinding, so I'm just trying to cut it as accurately as I can. First go off. There you go. So I'll just disassemble this. This is dead handy, this little tool, but I say I've got so little room. Ideally, I'd like to have it on a stand permanently somewhere, but it ain't going to happen. Not in this shop. So what I do, I just literally bolt it to the hardy hole or the pritchel hole on the anvil. Just put the got an old-fashioned half-inch bolt there. Just put it on there for safekeeping so I don't lose it. Back on the floor, under the bench somewhere. All right, I'm going to put a hole in the middle of this for the cable to go through. Um, I'm going to drill a big hole because I want to put a grommet, nice big rubber grommet, so the cable doesn't chafe. The, uh, all the blooming health and safety rules and regulations these days. So I've just come in and changed all my light fittings and because they were starting to corrode. Um, luckily I didn't have to pay for it and they even put a grommet in one of the power sockets because it had fallen out. Absolutely ridiculous. Then they have to write a sheet and pin it into the workshop to say what's been done and when and how it's all complies to this, that and the other. Health and safety is going to kill this country. All right, I'm just going to make sure this is open enough. Yep, that's it. Now this is just one of those little um, fly cutter things. Dead handy these are. Use them a lot. All sorts of things. Just going to put that away. Right. Just about fits, I think. I've, uh, I did have to just sand it a little bit on one edge because the top wasn't 100% square, but it goes in quite nicely. I'm putting it in this way because I want it flush at the top. Just make sure it's flush. One corner there that's not quite. Doesn't seem to want to go in. But okay, let's see, let's see what I'm up to. It's just that corner won't quite go down. Just give it a bit of a tap. 
find a small hammer. Don't really want that big one. But I don't want to damage it. That's probably just about got it. All this accurate work isn't like me. I'm trying to get things to fit tight and flush. Just a few spots. I'm going to go around and weld it um, a bit better on the inside. That one's sticking up now. Light discrepancy will sand off. So I've welded it all on the inside. You can see where the welds are. I'm just going to put a hole in each corner. So I've got it on the floor, um, so that if any rain gets into the top, I know it's not going to be watertight, but um, because the um, all the electrics are going to be onto this particular part. I don't want any water laying about. So I'm just going to put four holes in the corners. So if any rainwater does get in, which it will, um, it's not going to stay there. That's that's what I'm getting at. It's not going to build up. You're not we're not going to get any puddles that's going to affect the electrics. Although hopefully I'll be able to put a a waterproof junction box in there because that's where I'll join the junk the holder to the junction box and then they can wire their own power into the junction box. That's the theory anyway. So I'm just swapping over the drill, putting a slightly bigger one in, that was just my pilot. I'm just putting a quarter I think it's about a quarter drill in. I want to make it big enough. The trouble is, if you put too smaller holes in, I've had this happen before. Although water can get out, um, depending on the situation where it's, these things are, are situated, um, muck can get in there and block the holes up. There you go. Decent sized quarter holes. Um, yeah, so you get leaves, moss, you know, just general detritus gets into some of these things and blocks your holes up. So you need the hole. A reasonable size. Right, so that's basically it. I've given the top a quick sand off. Not quite sure how I'm going to fix this top on yet. It's going to be some sort of screws from up underneath. So the next part is going to be this decoration. Uh, I was going to cut it, um, but again, you know, the trouble I had with. Um, cutting with a grinder and that. So I've decided I'm going to forge it. I'm going to use this it's actually bigger than 13mm. Uh, I think it's about 15mm uh, by 8 So it's 15 by 3 or whatever. Um, so I'm going to cut some pieces off weld them all together and then actually forge them because I thought it would be much easier than trying to cut out four pieces that shape. So I'm just going to cut eight pieces about, I think I've measured them about eight inches long, something like that. I'll get it through the saw. Lovely tool this is. Really is a good tool. I didn't pay an awful lot of money for it, but they are very expensive. Um, to buy new, and if you want to try and get an old one like this, they're really, really expensive because they last. The modern ones are all fabricated. Um, this one's all cast, and it's it's solid. All right, there's my bits. I clean them up, weld them all together. Right, so I welded them all together, I cleaned them up, welded them all together, and I 
drawn it out on the anvil so that I can use that as a pattern as I'm going. So I'm going to try and figure out the best way to, to bend it. I don't think it'll actually need an awful lot of bending to be honest. I just hope it's not going to try and spread too much or spread apart because I'm basically trying to fold an eighth of an inch material on edge. I know I've got them all welded together but it still could go everywhere so it could be disastrous. I could end up having to cut them out after all. Let's see how we get on. So I'm just going to gently tap it and it is, it's starting to spread the, the, as soon as you start hitting it it's twisting and coming apart. I guess I should have probably put more tacks on. I only put three tacks down the, well I did each end and then three down the length. But it might hold. So I'm just trying to get the first sweep about right. I need to get the very end bent a bit more. And as I said it was 15 mil. that's going to work in my favour because if I put any damage on it I've got enough to play with that I can grind it back down and still get my 13 mil. If I don't damage it I'm going to leave it at 15 and it won't, it won't show, it won't notice. But if I do damage it I can grind it back down and it, it, it won't be undersized. clear up around this anvil. I've got crap all over the floor. That one's come adrift, that top one. You can see it's a different colour because it's just come adrift. But I think that's probably going to do it for the first bend. That looks pretty good to me. Just going to mentally make a note of where I want to bend the next bend. Let's see if you can see it from this angle a bit better. I'm just cooling off the bit I've already done so I can hit it on that. Let's just make a note of where I want to do it. Right, now that's coming out my tongs because you can see I left the tongs on it and they've heated up and <laughs> they've opened up as I'm hitting it. So I'm just going to quickly close them back down again and then cool them off. They, um, that wasn't the desired effect. Quickly pull them out. Just make sure it can, can hold the job still. That's the trouble when you mess about with reshaping tongs. But be careful you don't undo what you've done. Right, so. Again, it's sort of coming apart and twisting a little bit. I want to see how much more I've got to go. Not an awful lot, to be honest. I'm going to hold it from the other end this time. And then just knock that end down, because if I hit on the very end, it doesn't matter if I damage that end, because that will be cut off. Because I made these long enough, so that hopefully each end will get cut off, leaving undamaged material in the middle. That's the theory. Alright. Come on, get your act together. And you can see how much it's twisted. I'm not quite sure if that's because I hadn't got enough welds on it or, or what, but it is straightening back up quite easily. 
and I'm hoping it won't be too twisted once I take them apart. Now that isn't far off. In fact, I think I might actually call that a day at that. That doesn't look bad at all. I'm just contemplating. Just looking at it from every possible direction to make sure I don't need to do any more. Uh, the, the other advantage of doing stacked jobs, you can see it's split in the middle of it as well, the other advantage of doing jobs all stacked together is that providing you, they don't twist too much, they all come out identical. So if you do need to do uh, a job like this where you need lots of bits the same, um, that's the way to do it. See a couple of the wells are bust there. Just checking again that it's flat or flattish. I can do it with a hammer now, it's just going to save time mucking about later. Just check it once more. Yep, happy with that, so call that out. That's the kitty. Leave it like that. So now what I'm going to do is take the um, welds off and cut it to size. Okay, so what I did, I actually held the whole bar up against... Oh, it's all fiddly here. That's it, dropping them again. Right, I held the whole thing up against the, the uh, lantern and then I just chalk marked down the back and I'm, you know, both, both bits and then I just whipped the whole lot off with the angle grinder while it was all still in one piece and then miraculously they've fallen apart in two, that's uh, four lots of two. Now this pair I've taken apart, I've cleaned up a little bit, not 100% but just taken the welds off and they will fit up there nicely. They're going to go in a treat. Now hopefully it'll be the same in all, of, all four sides because miraculously for me, yep that'll go in there nicely. All four sides are about the same size, but that'll have to wait till next time. That'll be part two because I've run out of time. So catch you on the next one.